Okay, kids, here I am in the middle of chapter four. Catch up, asked Joe, showing his teeth. Cut it out, said Tom. Here, he glopped ketchup and mustard and horseradish on the night crawler, squeezed on a few drops of lemon juice and salt and peppered it. Billy closed his eyes and opened his mouth. Out with it. Tom sliced off the end of the night crawler and forked it up. But just as he was about to poke it into Billy's open mouth, Billy closed his mouth and opened his eyes. No, let me do it. Tom handed him the fork. Billy gazed at the dripping ketchup and mustard, thinking, Ugh, it's all right talking about eating worms, but doing it? Tom whispered in his ear, Mini bike. Glug. Billy poked the fork into his mouth, chewed furiously, gulped. His eyes crossed, swam, squinted shut. He flapped his arms wildly and then opened his eyes. He grinned beatifically up at Tom. Superb, Gaston. Tom cut another piece, ketched up, mustard it, salted, peppered, horseradished, and lemoned it, and handed the fork to Billy. Billy slugged it down, smacking his lips. And as they proceeded, now sprinkling on cinnamon sugar or a bit of cheese, some cracker crumbs or Worcestershire, until there was nothing on the plate but a few stray dabs of ketchup and mustard. Well, said Billy, standing up, wiping his mouth. So, we have done the first course. Any seconds? Let me look in your mouth, said Alan. Yes, yeah, Joe, see if he swallowed it all. Certainly, certainly, said Billy. Look, as long as you want. Alan and Joe scrutinized the inside of his mouth. Okay, okay, said Tom, leave him alone now. Come on, one down. 14 to go. How to taste, asked Alan. Good, good, said Billy. Very fine, very fine. He flapped his arms like a big bird, began to hop around the big barn. Good, good, very fine, very fine. Alan, Joe, and Tom looked worried. Uh, good, good. How you feeling, Billy? Tom asked. Yeah, stop flapping around and come tell us how you're feeling, said Joe. They huddled together by the orange crates as Billy hopping around and around them, flapping his arms. Good, good, very fine, very fine. Alan whispered, these crackers. Joe edged toward the door. Don't let him see we're afraid. Crazy people are like dogs. If they see you're afraid, they'll attack. Here's a picture. Okay, here's, here's Billy. And here are the boys looking on. Couldn't be, whispered Tom, standing his ground. One worm? Good, good, screeched Billy, hopping higher and higher and drooling from its mouth. Come on, whispered Joe to Tom. Hey, Billy, <coughs> burst out Tom suddenly in a heavy, quavering voice. Cut it out, will you? I want to ask you something. Billy's arms flapped slower. He tiptoed menacingly around Tom, his head cocked to one side, his cheeks puffed out, and Tom hugged himself chuckling ner nervously. Okay, cut it out, will you, Billy? Billy pounced. Joe and Alan fled the barn door, banging behind them. Billy rolled on the floor, helpless with laughter. Tom clambered up, brushing himself off. Did you see their faces, Billy said, laughing, climbing over each other out of the door. Oh, geez, Joe was pale as an onion. Yes, yeah, said Tom, you fooled them. Billy sat up, then he crawled over to the door and peeked out through the knot hole. Look at them peeking over the stone wall. Watch this. The door swung slowly open. Screeching, Billy hopped onto the doors until into the yard, up on one stump, splashed into a puddle, flapping his arms, rolling his head. Alan and Joe galloped up the hill through the high grass, yelling, here he comes, get out of the way. And then Billy stopped hopping and clamoring on the stump, called in a shrill girlish voice, Oh boys, where you going? I've something to for you little boys. Alan Joe stopped and looked back. Who doing, little boys? yelled Billy. I'm so scared. Who's scared, you lunk? called Alan. Yeah, yelled Joe. I guess I can go home without being called scared if I want to. But, oh, I'm dreadfully hoey, shouted Billy. I just remembered I was supposed to help my mother wash windows this afternoon, said Alan. That's all. He turned and started up through the meadows, his hands in his pockets. Yes, Joe, me too. 
he trudged after Alan. I doubt that. Chapter 5, The Gathering Storm. Alan and Joe stopped in the orchard by the pile of fresh dirt. You'd think he'd be able to do it? asked Alan, biting his thumbnail. I don't know, said Joe. He can't do it, said Alan. How could anybody eat 15 worms? My father would kill me. Fifty dollars. He ate that one awful easy. Forget it, said Joe. If it doesn't give up himself, I'll figure something out. We could spike the next worm with pepper. He'd eat one piece and then another, talking to Tom, and then all of a sudden he'd sneeze. Jump. Then he'd sneeze again. Jump. Then again. A faint look of panic would creep over his face. He's beginning to wonder if it will ever stop. He clutches his stomach. His eyes begin to water. Ka-chum, ka-chum. Billy's awful stubborn, said Alan. Even if it was killing him, he might not give up. He falls to the floor. I bend over him. God, I say, call his mother. It's the trolodysis. I don't know what that is. His eyes bleed up at me. Ka-chum. Remember that business last summer, said Alan, gnawing on a thumbnail when it was 95 degrees in the shade, and I dared him to put on all his winter clothes and his father's raccoon coat and his ski boots and walk up and down Main Street all afternoon. I bet Billy did it. Chum, chum. They went off through the orchard, Joe sneezing, sighing, rolling his eyes, pretending to be Billy suffering from a dose of pepper worm. Alan moaning to himself about how stubborn Billy could be. Fifty dollars. Chapter six. The second worm. Billy sighed. On the plate before him lay the last bite of worm under a daub of ketchup and mustard. What's the matter? asked Tom. I don't know, sighed Billy. He picked up the fork again. Does it taste bad? No, said Billy wearily. It just Taste ketchup and mustard mostly, but it makes me feel sort of sick, even before I eat it. Just thinking about it, he sighed again and then glanced at Joe and Alan talking to each other in whispers over by the window. What are you whispering about? Nothing. Then what are you whispering for? Nothing. It's not important. Just something Joe's father told him last night. What? Come on, finish up. It was nothing. We'll miss the cartoons. Billy shut his eyes and popped the last piece of worm into his mouth, chewed, gagged, clapped his hands over his mother, over his mouth, gulped, toppled backward off the orange crate. Sprawling on his back in chaff, he gazed peacefully up at the ceiling. Joe and Alan stood over him. Open up. Billy opened his mouth. Wider. See any, Joe? Nah. He swallowed it. Okay. Let's go. Chapter 7, Red Crash Helmets and White Jumpsuits. After the movies, Tom walked home with Billy. Tomorrow, I'll roll the crawler in cornmeal and fry it like trout. It's not really the taste, said Billy. It's more the thought. When I start to eat it, even though it's smothered in ketchup and mustard and grated cheese, I can't stop thinking worm. Worm, 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 worm. Gaggles of worms. Worms in bait boxes, drowned worms drying up on the sidewalks, a worm squirming as the fish hook gores into him, the soggy end of a worm dragging out over a dead fish's mouth, robins yanking worms out of the lawn. I can't stop thinking worm. Talk about again and again. It's repeated just so we know how bad it is. Yeah, but if I fry it in cornmeal, it won't look like a crawler, said Tom. I'll put parsley around it and some slices of lemon, and then you can concentrate and think fish. All the time you're waiting in the barn, all the time you're eating it, keep saying to yourself, fish, 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 fish. Here I am eating good fish. Trout, salmon, flounder, perch. I'll ride my mini buck into church. Dace, tuna, haddock, trout. Wait, you'll hear that minister shout. Fish, 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 fish. Shark haddock sucker eel. I'll race my father in his automobile. Eel flounder, bluegill shark. We'll race all day till after dark. Billy cheered up. Think that up. Think how they'll all stare. I'll rev up the aisle, zip around the front pews, down a side aisle, 
under the stained glass windows, my parents would kill me. Reverend Yarder peered down over the Bible stand. William, he'd cry, William, you take that engine thing out of here this minute. So they're kind of having, it's kind of like a, they're thinking about what they might do in the future. Yeah, and they'd come chasing out after us, said Tom. Billy laughed, waving their arms and yelling, and we'd lead them zigzagging around and around, in and out among the gravestones and monuments in the cemetery. And they'd roar off down the Sandgate Road, leaving them draped over tombs, panting and shaking their fists. And that Monday, we'd smuggle it into class disguised as Raymond Welly, because he's so fat and hide it under the coat closet. And then when Millie Butler said anything, anything at all, even something like, excuse me, or even if she sniffed, we'd dump a whole bottle of ink over her head and run for the coat closet, overturning chairs and desks behind us to slow up Mrs. Howard. She'd come after, after us, fuming and shouting and threats, and suddenly the doors of the coat closet would slam open, and we'd roar out on a mini bike in blood, blood red crash helmets and white jumpsuits, our scarves streaming out behind us. And we'd roar around and around the classroom while Mrs. Howard knelt over the overturned desks and chairs, sobbing helplessly into her hands, and then rum, rum, rumming out the door and up the hall, thumbing our noses at the monitors. Brackety, 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 up the stairs. Stiff arming tacklers into Mr. Simmons' office onto his desk. Boom, boom, a backfire into his face and zoom out the window as he topples backward in his chair and a hurricane of quiz papers and report cards. And then crunch, landing on the driveway, we roar off down the highway to Bennington and join the Navy. So Mrs. Howard and Mr. Simmons and her parents can't punish us. So they're thinking, boy, if they win that, they win this bet, they get the mini, the mini bike and all the fun they would have. I'll stop there, kids.